and oh, I forgot the slide. But in this diagram, you can see that the Arduino board, which you can see on the robot, is right here, is wired to the motor controller, and then that controls the motor. So that's just something that I learned while doing my project. The construction of my robot can be divided into two phases, and the design phase is where I actually built the robot. The programming phase is where I program my robot. So naturally the design phase would come first, and in order to start I had to create a list of objectives of what I wanted, uh, wanted to create my robot for. And the biggest one on this list is the cost. Mitigating the cost is really important, so I created a $100 budget for myself, and I didn't go over, I had about $18 left after I bought batteries and extra wires. Uh, and I achieved mitigating the cost by buying motors which are produced on a large scale. In particular, these motors are produced on a large scale, and they're produced for appliances such as refrigerators and microwaves. So because they're produced on such a large scale, you could buy them in bulk for a very cheap cost. At the same time, these motors came in with a motor controller board, which is very important, and I'll cover that later. And I also used materials that were of zero cost to me. That includes the 3D printed parts, which is everything orange that you can see, and the polycarbonate plate, which is the clear plastic that all the components rest on. Another objective for my design was to create a robot that was modular. And essentially what this means is that it can be easily replaced if a part breaks. So I achieved this by having 3D printed parts because if a 3D printed part breaks, it's simple. You just toss in another one onto the 3D printer and you just use that. And I also made it so that I can slide these motors out like that. So if something breaks, I can just slide it out and then put it back in. Uh, I also wanted my robot to be light, so I used light materials, which is the plastic is called PLA plus for the 3D prints and polycarbonate. Both are very light. So once I had ordered my robot parts and I had a design in mind, I began to create a 3D model of it. And I did this in a 3D modeling software called Autodesk Inventor. I did this in order to have a general idea of how big my robot would be. I would also need a power source for my robot. You can see it right here. This is a six volt battery. And I had a problem with creating this because I needed a total of four 1.5 volt batteries in order to create a six volt batteries. And the way that you do that is you have the negative terminal of the battery connect to the positive terminal of the next battery. And as a result, the voltage increases each time you do that. And that type of wiring is called a series. So during my build process, I, once I got all the components, I just laid it out onto a piece of cardboard just to see how big and how much space it would take up. And for fabrication, I just cut out that piece of cardboard and I took a pair of calipers, which is a measuring device, and I found the exact dimensions of the mouse and I cut it out for the, for the cardboard. After that, I transferred that piece of cardboard onto a big sheet of polycarbonate, which is again, this clear piece of plastic and then I just used the jigsaw to cut it out. After I cut the entire polycarbonate out, I began cutting out small holes right here so that they could fit the motors in. And at the bottom, you can see the final version of what the robot looks like. I know the wiring is a bit of a mess, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, some of the movements that I had to deal with is that the motors were sagging when they were placed into their motor mounts. 
In order to solve that, I added some number four screws right here, and that helped out a lot. It was really nice because it would help the robot move straight. When they were sagging, the robot could not move at all. I would also had to improve this project by adding some tubing right here because my original dimensions were a bit off and this tubing right here helps uh, contain the mouse and move the mouse. If I were to have any other improvements for this project, I would most likely use a CNC to cut out the polycarbonate instead of doing it by hand because doing it by hand, you have a lot of human error. So programming. So for programming, I had to write two programs for my robot. One of these programs would identify the target on the screen, which is, uh, if I can find it, it's essentially the blue ball that it was shooting earlier. And when it was shooting that ball, I had to create a program in Python that would identify the ball on the screen and the way that it did that, it would detect if the mouse crosshair was in the middle of the circle. And if the circle was blue, it would shoot. If it was not, it would not shoot. And this program runs in a Python IDE, and an IDE is simply a tool where programmers can easily write their code. And for this code to work, you have to import some libraries. These libraries contain code and this, these code act like shortcuts. So it's like, instead of having to program the entire mouse for yourself, you can just import a library that contains all the buttons that a mouse has, and that way you can tell the code to press that button for you, and it does it for you. Uh, I had a problem with programming it because I had multiple versions of Python on my computer, and because of that, I had to spend a few hours just figuring out what versions I needed to delete and what versions I needed to keep. If I had multiple versions of Python, the code could not run and it wouldn't work. So the other aspect of my code was programming the Arduino code. And the Arduino code is just basically the code that tells the motors what to do. And the way that it tells the motors what to do is that it sends code to the Arduino processor, which is this black piece right here. This black piece then sends the signals to the motor controllers. And these motor controllers basically decipher what direction the robot, or what direction the motors have to turn in and how far they have to turn. In order to be run, in order to run motors at the same time, I had to import Excel stepper, stepper library, which is essentially a library full of commands that help me run motors at the same time and construct different uh, identification numbers for motors. And here I just have a pre-programmed path of the robot, just demonstrating how it's just messing around with it two wheels rotating in the same direction. The biggest part about learning the Arduino code was learning about the different pins. And by pins, I mean where you plug in the electrical signals. And that was complicated because certain types of pins have certain types of outputs. Uh, in particular, I needed a PWM, which stands for Pulse Width Modulation Pins, and these have a square wave function where the top of the, of the graph represents when, the, when energy is being supplied to the robot, and when energy is not being supplied to the robot, it's off right here. And the main issue that I ran into my code was the fact that I had only a select number of these pins, in particular, I had two through 13 right here, and that was not enough because I had four motors, and that would require four pins for four motors, which is 16, and that's not enough pins. 
So I tried solving this by programming it into the Arduino code, and that did not work, so I ended up just simply inverting the motors. So if you think about it, if you have a motor plugged into pin one, and from pin one you go down to pin four, you can identify that as one motor. But for the other motor to go in the other direction in the same, in the same distance, what you would have to do is you would have to do it in the opposite way. So if you have the first one going one, two, three, four, the other one would have to go four, three, two, one. And once I finished both, both sections of my code, my robot could work, because what it would do is it would move in a pre-programmed path, it would move in a square counterclockwise, and as it would do that, the other program would shoot the targets on the screen. And you can see that being demonstrated in this video. So some key takeaways were just learning about how electrical engineering works, how, uh, how PWM works as a square wave function, and this really helped me reinforce my electrical engineering skills because usually I'm a mechanic and I just cut and glue stuff together. But even though this project is really rudimentary, uh, it can be applied to the automobile industry in particular when your car identifies objects on the, on the road. And when it identifies objects on the road, it has to calculate how far it is. And my robot could do that if I was a better programmer, but besides that, uh, that's 